also now introduce our guests who are joining us to take this discussion forward. We have a member of parliament from Sri Lanka, Erin Vikramaratne. We also have senior journalist Nina Gopal. Good to have uh, both of you on the broadcast with us. Erin, let me begin with you first. Uh, there is a lot of sus you know, suspense as far as the resignation is concerned. There is still no resignation by Gotabai Rajapaksha. Possibly by later tonight is what we are hearing from the speaker now. Is it now looking like a tactic to just buy time? I don't know whether it's time buying or maybe the uh, uh, Gotabe Rajapaksa is waiting till he gets to his safe haven uh, before he actually tenders his resignation. So that's just speculation. Uh, I think it may be something like that. Okay. Nina, let me bring you in. I want to understand, this is what I said when I started this discussion, that the initial demand of the protesters was that Gotabaya Rajapaksha needs to go. It then moved to that Ranil Vikram Singhe also needs to move. But just speaking as far as Gotabaya Rajapaksha is concerned, that entire slogan of Gotabaya Go, I want to understand what is the end destination for Gotabaya Rajapaksha. There was back and forth in Maldives. Now we're understanding there is no asylum request as far as Singapore is concerned. Possibly could move to Jeddah. Isn't there a lot of instability for the movement of Rajapaksha as well? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't think Gota has a home to go to because he's also, uh, you know, to stand for president, he had to give up his US presidency. So the US has refused to give him entry. So he can't possibly go to... Uh, escape like he did when he was under a lot of pressure, uh, you know, when the Tamil Tiger issue came up, uh, you know, and so he does have does have no home, so to speak. But, you know, he has very, very good relationships, uh, you know, which he has built up over the years with uh, the Nasheed, Mohammed Nasheed, the uh, yeah. former, uh, you know, leader of the Maldives. Uh, and uh, I, I know that uh, that Nasheed uh, also helped uh, Sri Lanka a, a lot during the last couple of months in approaching the UN and trying to get help. And Nasheed also operated out of Colombo for quite some time. So that is there. But then given the fact that there are so many hundreds of thousands of Sri Lankans who work in the Maldives, who actually, you know, there, was, there were people who were throwing uh, insults at him as he was being escorted into his car when he landed yeah. in the airport in Mali. Uh, so all that makes it difficult for him to uh, have stayed on in the Maldives, although I believe one of the resorts is even owned by uh, one of the Rajapaksas. Uh, Singapore is, is a different issue also because uh, the, the connections are there. Uh, when uh, Gota was uh, having surgery, I think, uh, heart surgery or something, I think he spent a lot of time in Singapore. He's mm. got very good connections in Singapore. So that is there. But you know, this whole thing about go home, Ranil go home is a bit inappropriate because okay. Ranil is, uh, has no foreign connections. He has n not made money uh, on the sly or anything like that. But he, unfortunately, in agreeing to, uh, let's say, do business with the mm. Rajapaksas and sort of save them by stepping in as prime minister, even though he had no, uh, you know, he wasn't voted to power, his UNP has uh, been reduced to nothing. I think he, that, that has sort of, you know, spilled over. Uh, the hate has spilled over to Ranil. Okay. I, I will talk to you the larger issue about why there is no acceptance even for Ranil Vikram Singh. But Erin, I want to come back to you and essentially I want to understand uh, for the longest time the Rajapakshas had been seen as the face of politics in Sri Lanka. But the public anger against them also had been mounting for quite some time. So shouldn't they have seen this coming then? Yes, we did see it coming, right, for a long time. And uh, actually on May 9th, these protests had been going on and they were peaceful. Uh, they unleashed violence on uh, protesters yeah. and uh, Sajid Premadas, the opposition leader, and I actually went there. And uh, in fact, uh, we came under attack ourselves and had to quickly move out. On the following day, we saw the president and I was there. I spent more than two and a half hours along with the team, explained to the president that the cry in the country was actually for him to go. And therefore, the dignified way in actually doing it was to bring a constitutional amendment, cutting the powers of the presidency. And we took it with along with us. 
but he wouldn't hear about it. And then I said, you have to do this because it's too risky. True. He said, I have an unfinished term. I said, that may be the cry in the country is different. So we made every attempt to try to make him understand that it was not tenable for him to hang on to office, but he wouldn't listen. And what he did is uh, two days later, he appointed a new prime minister and he thought, you know, he can actually get away, but that hasn't happened. And that's why the people came onto the streets and then finally he had to flee. So Erin, essentially what you're saying, there was a lot of uh, chatter even among the closest circles trying to tell him that this is something that could happen. Uh, we've also now accessed the first pictures of uh, Gotabai Rajapaksha once he and his wife and the security officials actually landed in Singapore. But Erin, what I'm also essentially now trying to understand for how long can this island hopping also continue from Maldives to Singapore and then possibly uh, to the UAE? That leadership vacuum still continues. We don't know which way the leadership or the name that can you know, take Sri Lanka forward. So I want to understand who is that face that can, she, you know, that can save Sri Lanka, essentially can have support as far as the parliament is concerned, but also as far as an acceptance with the people on the ground? Yeah, I think that there is a realization among parliamentarians that we need to, uh, you know, unite and put one person in. Uh, and there has been conversations like that. There will be a party leaders meeting convened tomorrow, right, at which uh, uh, there will be a request, and I, it's widely held, and believe mm. that the leader of the opposition will probably be asked uh, to take that position. Uh, so there is a consensus building. Uh, because people realize that we need political stability, uh, acceptance within the country, legitimacy with the people, as well as the markets need to recognize it. And then subsequently, uh, you know, after that is done, form a, a more multi-party government uh, to provide the stability to move into the next phase. So Nina, essentially taking on from what Erin is saying, that this is the time where a consensus now needs to be achieved very, very quickly. So I want to understand from you, uh, do you think there can be an agreement as far as the SLPP and the SGP is concerned? Because as we said, time is also running out with each passing day, the instability for people on the ground and Lankans and the citizens only continues. What we're also now understanding that there will be a proposal, the name as far as the opposition is concerned for a prime minister at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Do you think there can be an agreement today between the SJP and the SLPP? I will have to uh, request both my guests to stay on with us because now we are